Hear now St. Matthew's account of Palm Sunday, recorded in St. Matthew's Gospel, the 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Palm Sunday King. Amen. This morning we'll meditate on our Gospel reading today from Matthew chapter 21. Before we do so, let's ask for God's blessing in prayer. All glory, laud, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. As you receive their praises, accept the prayers we bring, O source of every blessing, our good and gracious King. Amen. Honestly, I I wonder if at least a couple of the disciples were a bit confused or maybe even annoyed by it. On the day that we know in history as Palm Sunday, Christ and his disciples were making their way into Jerusalem from the place they were staying, the city of Bethany, about two miles or so southeast of Jerusalem. And they were getting pretty close to the city. They were climbing up and up and up the other side of the Mount of Olives. And when you get to the crest of the Mount of Olives, that's when you see Jerusalem spread out in front of you uh, across the valley below. Actually, approaching Jerusalem from the east is is a lot like approaching uh, Cincinnati from the south. Maybe you've driven on I-75 at some point in your life driving north and you pass that famous landmark, the Florence Yall water tower on your left, right? And you're driving and maybe five, ten minutes later, you cross this, you turn this bend of the interstate and all of a sudden, boom, right? There's this beautiful panoramic view of downtown Cincinnati. Approaching Jerusalem is kind of similar. You're kind of making your way up, 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 and then all of a sudden you get to the crest, and there's this beautiful panoramic view all of a sudden of the holy city, Jerusalem. And on this particular day, Jesus and his disciples are are making their way up that mountain, but maybe an eighth of a mile before they get to the crest of Mount Olives, um, Jesus stops the procession. And he says to two of his disciples, hey, go go to this village right over there. And when you walk in, you're going to see a a donkey with his colt tied there. So go, untie him, bring him back to me. If if someone says something to you, just say, the Lord needs it. He'll send them right away. 
I think we often, as we ponder the Palm Sunday account, we, we think of what it'd be like to be one of those two disciples, right? You go into this little village, and like Jesus said, it's, there's this donkey and his colt tied right there. And Matthew doesn't mention it, but St. Mark and St. Luke do. They say that as they're untying these animals, the people standing around, some of whom were the owners of these animals, they say, hey, hey what are you doing there? <laughs> untying that colt. And they respond as Jesus told them to. Well, the Lord needs it. He'll send it back. And they're pacified. Divine intervention, right? But this morning, as we meditate on Matthew's account, maybe just try to picture being one of the other ten disciples that's just kind of hanging out, waiting for these other two disciples to run on this errand and come back. What sort of thoughts might have been running through your head as you're that close to the city, but you're just kind of stopped and waiting? If it was me, I might have been thinking, you know, like, what's the hold up here? Why do we need a donkey? We don't got any luggage. It's not a pack animal. And if Jesus is going to ride the donkey in the town, like, why wait all this time? Because, I mean, by the time that those guys go and get the donkey and come back, we could have easily walked there. I mean, it's not very far. Maybe you've been in a situation like that in a group, right? That often is the way we think. It's like, why are we doing this when we could much easier do that? Yeah? But, of course, on this day, our Lord Jesus is not concerned about efficiency, He's not concerned about travel time. No, Palm Sunday was a day for him to make a statement. And because he wanted to make a statement, uh, he knew that the prophet had said, right? He knew all that was written about the Christ. He knew the prophet had said that, um, see, Jerusalem, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on the colt, the foal of a donkey. And this was the day for that prophecy of Zechariah to be fulfilled. And it was. As you heard, as Christ got onto that donkey and, and, and rode down into the, the city from the Mount of Olives, uh, this large crowd of people, people coming out of the city, people coming with Jesus, they, they had this big celebration, right? This joyous, joyous event. Uh, Matthew says it this way. It says, a very large crowd spread their cloaks in the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them in the road. Matthew doesn't tell us that these are palm branches, but actually St. John does in his account of Palm Sunday. But what Matthew does record for us are these messianic acclamations that the people spoke as they praised Jesus. They shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. But then St. Matthew's account sort of ends on a bit of a downer sort of note. Did you notice that? Once Christ had entered the city, we're told that, that the city was stirred. Right? All the people that live there, uh, all the pilgrims that had come from far and wide to celebrate the Passover that week, they were stirred. And they were asking, well, who is this guy who received this amazing welcome outside the city gates? And the crowds that welcomed him said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Doesn't your heart kind of sink a little bit when you hear how they describe Jesus? This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Here Jesus had made this, this huge statement. He was trying to say, I, I am the king that Zechariah is talking about. Right? I come to you riding on a donkey, lowly, I'm your king, Jerusalem. And they said all the right things. 
They use the messianic acclamations that, that were appropriate for that day. And so you think that they get it as you hear him praising him outside the city gates. But then at the end, they call him the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus makes this statement, and it seems like largely it was missed by the crowd out there outside of Jerusalem. Because they saw him more as prophet than as king. But you know, that's actually fairly easy to do, isn't it? I mean, plenty of people today would acknowledge that Jesus is a prophet. Uh, Muslims would say that he's a prophet. And we would also say he's a prophet. But he's more than a prophet. He's a king. But it's easy, of course, for us to just kind of see him as prophet. It can be easy for us to see him as prophet because when we do that, we essentially are, are saying like, well, I'll listen to you. You can be an advisor in my life. I'll listen to you and I'll take your, your advice and your, your teachings under advisement, but ultimately I... I can decide, call the shots in my life. I'll, I'll choose what, what I think applies to my case, but what I don't, I'll discard. Um, I'll pick what I like and discard what I don't. It can be easy to see Christ that way, right? And then we remain in control of things. But, but if Jesus is king... That's a different relationship, right? Much different relationship. Because if he's king, then, then he's in control. And my will is bound by his will. And his word is my command. So it's, it's worth thinking about today on this Palm Sunday as we look at Matthew 21, what is Jesus in my life? Is Jesus prophet, advisor, or is he king? Is, is his will my command? Or is, is his will advice that I'll take under advisement as I live my life? when we're honest with ourselves, we'll readily admit that there have been plenty of times in our lives where Christ has just been prophet. He's just been advisor. And his will has taken a back seat to my will. In fact, we, we said as much earlier, right, in, in our service. We said, Father in heaven, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep, we have done what we have desired and devised in our hearts. We've done those things that we should not have done. And we've not done those things that we should have done. But here's the amazing thing. Even though we have been unfaithful subjects, our Lord Jesus Christ has not been an unfaithful king in any way, shape, or form. You see, the, the calling, the role of a good and, and righteous king is to fight for the well-being and the safety of his subjects. And the Lord Jesus Christ, our king, he has done that on a level that no human king even comes close to. I mean, Jesus Christ, our King, he rode into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday, knowing full well that by Thursday night, he'd be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. By Friday morning, he'd be affixed to a Roman cross. And by Friday evening, he'd be dead and buried in a borrowed tomb. 
He rode into Jerusalem knowing full well that he was about to endure the greatest injustice the world has ever seen, where every level of society failed colossally. And humanity was at its worst. But he was willing to go through it all. Because he knew that behind the scenes, the Father in heaven was exacting justice. And justice would be carried out on him. So that we would be freed from the condemnation of our sins. And so, dear people of God today, as we regret our sinful faults, let's also rejoice in our amazing Savior in our Palm Sunday King who came to Jerusalem that week to save us. And he did. By his blameless life, by his sacrificial death, and by his glorious resurrection. And on this Palm Sunday today, in spirit, let us grab our palm branches and shout acclamations that Christ is Messiah knowing that he's not just prophet, he's king. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. Lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds 